Lagnacilia means the hollow of the chapel. And as you make your way to this site, you fully appreciate its dramatic location on the steep slopes of Cronkneary Lay. When you get here, you find the chapel, the square building in the centre, and you come in through an entrance that's guarded by two modern pillars of stones. Once you've entered the site, you are actually inside the burial ground. It's a, an almost circular enclosure that projects like a terrace from the steep slopes of Cronkneary Lay. Just outside the hallowed ground is a second structure, which has been interpreted as the cell that would have been occupied by the priest who officiated in services at this incredible location. This is the chapel itself. It's a tiny structure. Inside it measures about three and a half meters by two and a half meters square. It's very simple. The doorway's in the west end, overlooking the sea. The altar would have been at the east end, against the hillside. And the interior would have been lit by a single window in the south wall just next to me. This kind of structure wasn't for congregational use you get a very, very small number of people inside. So we think that the priest would undertake whatever services he required uh, within the church, and then he would come out and celebrate with the congregation outside. From within the chapel, the main source of light was through the south window, the sill of which still survives here. As the sun tracked round from the east in the morning towards the south at noon, light would have poured in through the window and fallen upon the altar, which would have been against the east wall. When the site was excavated in 1907, the remains of the altar were found, constructed out of stone pillars and containing a small number of white quartz pebbles. Quartz pebbles of this kind are found on many keel sites and appear to be associated with death and with religion and with remembrance. As originally constructed, the chapel had walls that were only about 0.6 of a metre wide. During the lifetime of the structure, that was found to be inadequate to support the roof and those structural problems contributed to the extension of the wall, thickening it to almost twice the width on the south side of the wall here, on the north side of the chapel, and also on the west gable. In amongst that material, we found a number of cross slabs from earlier graves that had been incorporated into the chapel structure itself. So many, in fact, that Lagnacilia has the second highest number of crosses of any site in the island after Mackled. It's possible that this apparently random stone sticking out of the ground is a marker for an early medieval grave. And if so, it really emphasises that this circular platform here was once teeming with burials that took place in the medieval period. We know from the discovery of 10 cross slabs from this site that there must certainly have been a very important Christian presence here. Excavations undertaken in 1907 uncovered a few burials just inside and just outside the chapel, just to our east. And it would appear that those burials prove that the site began first and foremost as a cemetery and only later in the medieval period was the chapel itself added. This tiny structure built just outside the hallowed ground of the graveyard was the place where the priest lived. It would be called the priest's cell for the simple fact that it was a single room structure, but it was enough for a simple life. 
He had everything he needed here, ground that he could potentially have uh, grown crops on, and the sea in which he could have taken fish, and indeed shellfish from the shoreline. The perception is that this site is at the end of a footpath. In fact, it's on a footpath which continues further south, all the way around the slopes of Cronkneary Lay and coming out at the Slock. Nevertheless, the site is located in a very peripheral location, very close to the boundaries of parishes and between sheedings, none of which, of course, originally would have been here at the time that the chapel was in use but they do add to the perception of this location as being somewhere on the edge of things, a place remote from anywhere else where a priest might once have spent many days in contemplation. Centred on this man-made terrace, hallowed ground, graveyard, thousand years old, the remains of Lagnacilia made sophistication to an untrained eye. But buried within its walls, great care has been taken in its construction and its windows have been placed in such a way as to maximise the drama of the religious ceremonies that went on inside it. That sophistication has meant that this building has lasted for over a thousand years. And even today, it remains relevant to faith and to pilgrimage. 